I've been following the World Cup with limited success for the past week. When we lived in Southern California back in the 80s and 90s, I used to coach kids soccer, and it was a blast. I also want to bring you up to speed about the channel. More about that at the end, but back to soccer for right now. What hits me about soccer is just how differently English speakers speak about a common game. Take, for example, how the teams are organized in the World Cup tournament. As Americans, we would talk about how the teams are organized into brackets, showing who is playing who. British speakers tend to talk about the draw, like the order of teams was randomly drawn out of a hat. Take the score from last Friday's game between Team USA and England. It was 0-0. We would say it was a tie. The British would most likely call it a draw. The game between Team USA and England was not a game, but a match. Go figure. A match for Americans is usually referring to an individual competition between two people, like a tennis match. But then we could have four people playing a couples match. So would this match be played on a soccer field? No, it's a pitch. Colleen will hook that ball in. Clears to the top of the box, pick Sook. Oh! Some Americans who are really into soccer and want to show their superior knowledge of the game might call it a pitch as well. Well, la di da. And what do we call it when a poor player is tackled and down on the grass? We would say he's on the ground. No, he's on the floor, even though it's grass and dirt. Take these finely outfitted individuals. Surely we can agree on what they wear. An American player wears a shirt or a uniform. In England, it's their kit. And it gets even worse with what we put on our feet. Brits wear boots. And we're not talking about ankle-high boots for hiking, just regular soccer cleats. And finally, while we call it soccer, and football for us is a totally different game, most of the world calls it football because you play it with your feet. But in American football, we only use our feet in a few special plays during the match. And if you like this little linguistic adventure in the difference between American and British English regarding a common game, you should check out the TV show Ted Lasso on Apple TV. If we need someone to explain the differences in a common language over the same game being played today, imagine how tricky it can get when explaining a text that is written over 2,000 years ago in a totally different culture religious atmosphere, and language. This is what this channel is all about, bringing some of the complexities and nuances of interpreting an ancient text like the Bible to YouTube. It's been over a month since I posted my last video. Why? I currently have an overload of teaching for Fuller Theological Seminary. I have almost 70 students in three classes, and I'm running on coffee. Today is December 7th, 2022, and this is the last day for them to turn and work. The classes will be over. This is where the perspective of a student and a professor sharply diverge. It might be over for the students, but the crush is just beginning for me. Soon I'm going to have over 700 pages of papers sitting on my desk. Metaphorically speaking, of course, they're going to be on the computer as e-documents multiple online discussions to comment on and grade, and other administrative matters to clear up before the deadline to turn in grades hits a week and a half from now. This is why I haven't posted new videos for the past month or so. Some have asked if this is because of either my heart or health issues. Surprisingly not. In fact, I met with my cardiologist about a month ago and he was pleased with how well I was doing. No visits to the ER or jump starts since last spring. The reason why I didn't post was my own foolishness. What sounded like a feasible and a good idea in August is a mountain of work. So for the next week, my TA and I will be plowing through this avalanche of papers with our trusty little red pens. Once all this is wrapped up and I submit the grades, I'm going to kit up, hit the pitch, and get back in the match. Sorry. I just had to continue the soccer idea or metaphor one more time. So be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can either do it by clicking underneath the video here or at the very end, clicking on the little icon on my face over here. And YouTube will let you know when those videos hit the internet. Till then, cheers.
Warning, the following symptoms and or allergic reactions may occur when changing your vocabulary. These may include confusion, befuddlement, and or outright amusement in others. Allergic reactions may include a haughty attitude, saying things you don't mean, and or people talking behind your back. Do not make any changes to your daily lexicon without consulting your fifth grade grammar teacher, Mrs. Kravowski.